Can I ask you a question? What's your greatest fear? To make it fair, I'll tell you mine. I'm not talking about my fear of snakes or the social anxiety I get sometimes during the lead up to different events, or the fear of approaching the cute girl in the cereal aisle at the grocery store. I'm talking about something that resides below the surface, something that I think many of us are afraid of, and I think it's the reason why terms like YOLO and FOMO exist. It's why people go through a quarter life crisis, a midlife crisis, and eventually the end of your life crisis. Maybe an episode of this fear is so regular that you book it into your calendar every Tuesday at 4pm because you know life's busy and you need to be productive. So have you worked it out? My greatest fear is time. Time doesn't care about us. Time moves by at the same speed without any regard to how we feel about it. And each year it seems to pass faster and faster than the previous one. I'm not sure how this is 2022. But here we are. According to current statistics, only 1 in 20 of us will live to 100. And assuming we are one of those lucky ones, we will live through 5,200 weeks. That means as of today, I am week 1,281 out of 5,200. These are not big numbers either. To put it into perspective, imagine each week is one second on a clock. And let's say you're born at 12 a.m. Your 100 year life will be over before half past one. That's one hour, 26 minutes, and 41 seconds later. And when you really let these numbers sink in, it's hard not to think about your life. For me, I think about, man, I've used up 25% of my time. What have I done? What am I doing? What the fuck am I going to do? And it can very easily just spiral downwards from here, especially when you consider the life cycle of us humans. See, for the first 1,040 weeks of your life, we are what I like to call consumers. During this time, we consume everything around us without doing very much for society. We are dependent on our parents or primary caretakers who provide everything for us. Food, shelter, warmth, education, and the opportunity to make our own decisions is generally pretty limited. This protection allows us time to develop into fully functioning humans who are capable of entering the main block of life. For the next 2,340 weeks, we become producers. We become the people who keep planes in the sky, trucks on the roads, wheat in the fields, and of course, the mighty internet from collapsing. We become the providers, the protectors, and the problem solvers of society. In this block of life, we generally have families of our own that we care for and nurture, just like how our parents did for us. But we cannot remain in this main block of life eternally. Eventually we reach retirement age where we transition back to being consumers once again. But unlike last time when we were consuming when we are growing, this time we are deteriorating. The performance of our mind and body noticeably decreases. Perhaps you accumulated enough wealth during the main block of life. And in that case you are in theory free to spend the next 1080 weeks however you like. Although not everyone will achieve such financial freedom. If this is you, you become dependent on your family or government for support. But that's okay, you did well, you served your time. And eventually that hourglass will empty and it will all be over. At this point there may be some confusion. I do not fear time because I fear death. Don't get me wrong, the permanence of death is frightening. But if I'm honest, I fear wasting time more. I fear letting life slip by. I fear trading all my time and then coming to the conclusion that holy fuck, I have not enjoyed myself. This is something I have struggled to come to terms with for a few years now. It's a fear so common that's one of the main reasons why the self-help industry has been so economically successful. Whether it has been effective or not is up for debate. And so this is a problem that I see. We cannot change the life cycle of humans. We need time as children and teenagers to develop and become our own persons. We need to keep the world running as adults because all of our lives depend on it. And finally, we need the support of our families and the greater society as we progress through old age. But I see the main block of life as the most fun, the time with the most adventures and the most amount of freedom. But paradoxically, it is when we are most free and capable that we have the most responsibilities. So we need to find a way where we can have fun without shying away from our duties for humanity. Like all challenges, I find it helps to have a plan. And so today I want to share with you my plan of what I'm going to do with my life. It's called the cake model and it requires you to start thinking really intentionally about your life. But before we start baking, to understand the plan, you need some context. We're going to rewind a full decade ago to when I was 14, working my first job on a golf course. 
I'll spend the afternoons after school on the driving range picking up golf balls. No matter the conditions, blistering summer afternoons, rain, or even thunderstorms, I would be down there. I wasn't forced to, I wanted to work. I saw everyone else around me working, so I thought I should be as well. On the weekends, I would be playing cricket during the summer or football in the winter. And that was me, school, work, and sport. But as school started to demand more time, I decided to stop playing sport and focus on the academic side of school. For the rest of high school, my routine was school, work, and homework. On the weekends, I would study for most of the day and then go to work. Of course, I'd play some video games and I would hang out with friends, or maybe even go on a trip. But it was a rarity. So I graduated from high school with pretty good grades and I moved away from home for university. I like math, science, and particularly chemistry, so I decided to study chemical engineering. Shortly after I started my first semester, I was already working two jobs. One as a lawnmower and the other as a salesperson at an electronics store. As I got further into the year, I stopped my lawn mowing job and picked up another day at the store. This was me for the, basically the next five years. A combination of work, study, with fun sprinkled in on rare occasions. And during my time at university, I kept wondering, am I going to like this? Am I wasting my time? I kept justifying how hard I was working by telling myself that eventually I'll be happy and filled. And over the last couple of years, I have learned that I was operating off the if and then then model of happiness, which doesn't actually achieve happiness or fulfillment. I mentioned in my first video that on my 20th birthday, it became clear I didn't like who I was. So over the next three years, I improved my body, improved my communication skills, built more self-confidence, increased my knowledge of the world while picking up more hours at the store and maintaining pretty decent grades at university. I'm very proud of myself for pushing through that pain, but even then I felt like I wasn't enough and that I could still do more. Towards the end of my degree, I was working two days a week as a junior engineer at a power plant and I would work the weekends at the retail store while finishing the last two subjects. And then the anxiety hit. What the fuck am I going to do once I'm finished? Do I work full time? Should I go in a graduate program? What will make me happy? Am I running out of time to do the things that I want to do, like go traveling, hiking, and go on adventures? But then I realized that up until this point, I've been following the narrative that so many of us follow. The school plus work, and then university plus work. Or maybe you chose not to go to uni and dive straight into the soul-crushing full-time portion of our lives. So basically all of our previous dreams get pushed aside as responsibilities pile up. By the way, this is not entirely your fault either. Most of the things we are told are lies. But that's a story not yet told. I looked into the pain that I was feeling and visualized what my life would look like if I kept going down this path. I would try to find a high paying job in the engineering field, work 40 to 60 hours per week. Saturdays would be recovery to catch up with the activities I did not get to, like meal prep, cleaning, laundry, shopping for groceries. Then Sunday, I might be so tired that I would not do anything but rest. On occasion, I'll go for a day hike or maybe catch up with a friend or two. Then miraculously, I meet another girl that likes me and I like her too, so we start dating. At first, the dynamic is great, but there are a couple of things about her that bother me. I'm enjoying the attention, so I push the aspects that are bothering me aside. Years go by, we get married, and soon after, we have a kid that's on the way. See my friends less and less, my social circle is shrinking. I'm stuck at a job that no longer excites me because now I have a wife and child to provide for. Each day, I feel like my wife and I are moving further apart, becoming less intimate physically and emotionally. I see a divorce on the horizon, but I ain't all that too. I look at my bank account and feel like each year I'm falling further and further behind due to inflation and the rising cost of living. Retirement is slipping away. As I plop myself on the couch at the end of another day, an advertisement comes on the TV for a tour that tracks the Annapurna circuit. I remember that doing that hike was always a dream that I wanted to do, but always found excuses not to do it. Now I feel like it's not even a possibility. My fitness is not there, financially it would be difficult, and I make excuses about my withering home life. I go down to a local coffee shop in the same town I've been living in for the last 30 years, and I see an older gentleman sitting by himself. So I decide to join him. We start talking about both of our lives, and I can't help but see the similarities. His bus pulls up to take him back home. He says his goodbyes and he leaves me sitting at the table by myself, looking at my cup of tea. When I look up, I realise that now I'm that old man waiting for his bus. Life just kind of slipped by. And to be honest guys, that fucking terrifies me. You know, it just doesn't seem to make sense to sacrifice these best years of our lives 
for some golden years down the road that seems to be getting further and further away. But if you watch part three of the existential load, then you know I have resolved this inner turmoil. So rather than following the narrative, I put the brakes on, maintain working part-time at the power plant and use the rest of the time that I had to really reflect on how I'm going to bake this cake. Okay, but wait. I think at this point I should make it very clear that this is just everything I have come up with over the last few years. There is no science. This is just my complete opinion based off my own feelings and intuition. So, are you ready? Let's bake. To bake a cake, you need some core ingredients. Flour, eggs, butter, milk, sugar, and so on. Each of these ingredients represents aspects of your life. All the other aspects of your life act as the topping. To make the cake better, but if the core ingredients are in balance, you can still have a pretty great cake without any extras. So the first step is to identify what aspects of your life are the core ingredients to the cake. And the best way to determine what these ingredients are is to visualize what your ideal lifestyle is. And once you have a clear idea of what your ideal lifestyle would be, you can break it down to fundamental components that are important to you. This is understanding what you truly want. So seriously, pause the video and imagine the life you want to live. Write it down and list the most important aspects. Those are your core ingredients. And once that's very clear, you can start asking yourself, how can I achieve this? I really think it doesn't need to be more complicated than this. Obviously, there are going to be challenges in actually achieving the life you want. But you must be clear on what is truly important to you and what you truly care about. And when I say what you truly care about, I actually mean you. Not what people around you care about, not what society tells you to care about, not what you see on social media. Actually, what you care about on an experiential level. Once you understand that and believe that you deserve it, and can achieve it, all of a sudden it is actually very possible. Especially when you have a few key components to focus on, you're taking this large problem and dividing it into small and more achievable problems. You just need to believe and put plans into actions. This isn't coming from someone who has achieved this, this is coming from someone who is trying. And I feel like I'm getting closer. Okay, we have gotten to the point of the video where we need to talk about core ingredients. I want you guys to come up with your own ingredients, but I have always found examples to be useful. So let's talk about mine. I value my health emotionally and physically above all else. I am by no means a health nut, but I have recognized that all aspects of life are better if I'm feeling well. So eating a balanced diet of meats, veggies, fruits, dairy products and carbs, drinking plenty of water, getting enough sleep, going to the gym four times a week and meditating for at least 10 minutes every day is important to me. I don't know if you noticed as I was talking about my life up until this point, but a common pain point for me was my social life. I had friends, but I never took the initiative to intentionally build these relationships. And this often resulted in me feeling lonely and experiencing lower self-worth. I actually used how busy I was with work and study to avoid addressing this area. I wanted to be better. But if I'm going to be honest, I felt like I wasn't capable of being better. And this is compound to be feeling like I don't deserve these high quality relationships. And that is why it's so hard to break through these barriers and start improving. And like, honestly, this is just an ongoing process for me. So what am I doing? I try to make the effort and spend time with the people I genuinely care about. I show an interest in their lives and genuinely want them to do well. I try to put myself out of my comfort zone and meet new people. But for transparency, I could be better at this and I am working on that. Like, okay, we can't talk about relationships without talking about dating. And dating is something that has never come easy to me for many reasons. But nonetheless, here's my game plan. I have identified key values and qualities that I want in a partner. And I'm not going to settle until I do meet someone that has those attributes. That being said though, in order to find said person, I need to be constantly putting myself out there and being vulnerable. And that means I also need to be the human who is capable of attracting such a person. I think I'll be fine even if I don't meet such a person. Meaningful relationships are according to green, but dating is like the pistachio nuts, strawberry slices and chocolate chips. These toppings make the cake better, but I don't think they are essential. But who knows, that may change. The career aspect of life is something I have thought very long and hard about. I think a lot of us want to use our careers as a vehicle to achieve our purpose. But I think the concept of a purpose is misunderstood. But again, that's a story not yet told. If you are employed, then chances are you have a job. 
What you really want is a career that meets some certain criteria. I want my career to allow me to exercise a large amount of freedom, to have the ability to choose what I want to do when I want to do it. And I want the work that I do to make the world a better place, which is a reason why I started this channel. Money is awesome. It solved a huge problem for humanity, trust. And in today's world, we need money just to be able to afford the necessities in life and achieve a certain level of comfort. And you can achieve a satisfying and meaningful life without an abundance of money. But I think that not having to worry about money definitely makes it easier. Money is not going to solve all of our problems, but that's why we have other ingredients. Being intentional with money basically means having a financial plan. I plan to manage spending, accumulate savings, and also investing to make sure that we're combating inflation. And ultimately, this is just going to let me exercise more freedom. Okay, so my last ingredient is adventure. I want to go hiking, camping, and traveling. I want to see the world and experience different ways of living. But there's a problem here. I cannot do these things all the time because shit needs to get done. So that means I need to see life as an adventure as a whole. So small events that break up the monotony of the day to day. That means saying yes to opportunities as they arise, like catching up with friends, trying new interests, and taking calculated risks. Those are my core ingredients of my plan on what I'm going to do with my life. Obviously, a lot of the details are pretty fuzzy, but that's a work in progress and I'm okay with that. But having these core ingredients gives me guidance on achieving the life that I want to live. It's worth highlighting again that these are the ingredients for a plain cake. The rest are just toppings. I think often we focus so much on the toppings and forget about the rest of the cake, but that's a story not yet told. But for now, I encourage all of you guys to go through the same process. Visualize a lifestyle that you want to live and then identify what key components make up that lifestyle. And then you can start thinking about what particular things you can do to start achieving each of those core components. And then after you do that, you just need to start putting the plan into action. And eventually, at some point down the line, you'll see that this is actually something that you can achieve. But that's the end of the video. If you got to here, I appreciate you. If you enjoyed it, give it a like. I'll see you next month. Remain hopeful. Enjoy the rest of your day.